Hello and welcome back to another video. This is the second episode of story in which before his death, Minato had created a tool that was meant to succeed the Hiration. But now that he's passed it on to his kid, what will Naruto do with the power to control time and space? Please smash the like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started. It was early morning as the sun began to rise over the sleeping village of Kanoha. At this time many ninjas were already awake and performing their duties like clockwork as some were on gate duty, some were on patrol, and others were doing their morning exercises. However for a certain member of the Hyuga household, things were slightly different. On this pleasant morning, the Hyuga heiress was awakened by the light that shined through her curtains. Although by certain perspectives she was considered a princess, she sure didn't indulge in the perks of one. With all the wealth and servants Hinata had at her disposal, she enjoyed doing things her own way. The pale girl rubbed the weariness from her eyes as she made her way to her dresser to begin her usual morning schedule. Ever since that promise she made with Naruto, the two of them have been going to the forest every morning to train. At first it was difficult to maintain, but as they got older the process became much easier as they went along. In the beginning they were ambitious in their pursuit of betterment. First was a run around the forest to gain stamina then tree climbing for strength and finally light sparring for dexterity, toughness, and taijutsu polishing. With any time left they did whatever they felt was necessary to do. Although most of that time was spent sitting around talking about anything they could think about which they thoroughly enjoyed. She then got dressed in her black form fitting training attire and then exited her room. Hinata-sama, will there be anything you require of U.S.? Hinata looked to the branch family member as she shook her head. Thank you, but I do not, as she gave a polite bow before leaving. As she left a slight frown couldn't help but appear as she thought about Niji and all the branch members. In the years the Hyuga clan had existed, there have been two distinct factions. The main family and the branch family, although officially the branch family were the protectors of the main it was painfully obvious to see that most of the main family treated the branch like slaves. This idea left bitterness in her mouth to which she tried to rectify. As far as she saw it they were all one big family and should be equal in every aspect of that meaning. However it was not easy to reach out to them as she was the Hyuga princess and they were simply servants, bridging the gap would not be easy. Naruto also agreed with this idea as he saw some of the living conditions the branch members were having. But seeing that someday she would become the next head, this is something I must fix. For now, she did what she could for them. Now making her way down the hall she stopped at a particular door as she knocked on the frame before sliding it back. Hanabi-chan, are you going to come on a run with me this morning? The young Hyuga looked slightly irritated as she fumed to her older sister. Knock it off with the Hanabi-chan. I'm not a child. Anymore, as Hanabi now dressed in her training attire soon exited her room to join her. Okay Hanabi, Hinata giggled as she petted her to which she responded by swatting her hand away before proceeding outside. At first Hanabi wasn't too interested in joining Hinata in her training regime. But after the incident with Naruto, well. Flashback, why should I do something foolish like train with you guys, bluntly stated Hanabi. You and Hinata Nizan probably just waste all that time messing around. So why should I waste my time when I'm better off training with the main branch? Come on Hanabi-chan, it'll be fun, smiled Naruto. And besides, it was Hinata-chan's idea that you'd come along with us. The young Hyuga felt irked at the honorific. Stupid blonde, I'm better off training with my peers. So if you'll excuse me. But just before she was out of hearing range, oh I see, then interjected Naruto. You're just afraid of how hard the training is. Hanabi stopped dead at where she stood. What? You're probably right. The training me and Hinata-chan do is probably way too much for a little kid like you to do anyways. Hanabi then turned back and gave the blonde a signature Hyuga glare. Do you care to say that again? Yeah you're afraid and I completely understand that it's just too hard for you. He then started pushing Hinata to the exit. So if you'll excuse us, 
we better let you get back to your training. Hold it. Hanabi then exclaimed. I don't know who you think you are. But I will not allow you to sully the Hyuga clan name by saying something was too difficult for me to do. So I will personally show you how pathetic your training schedule is. End flashback Hinata couldn't help but giggle again. Although her sister was young, she had the Hyuga ego down perfectly as she was easily baited into coming along. So it has been a few weeks now as Hanabi was joining her on her training runs. Consequently her relationship to her sister was slightly improved as at least they were on talking terms and at times she would listen when she was giving advice to her. The two Hyugas made their way to the training grounds in the forest to which they were then greeted by another common sight. Hey guys. It took you both long enough. The pair looked to the direction of the voice as Hanabi gave the boy a slight glare as her lips couldn't help but twist in disgust. It's the stupid monkey boy again. That's not very polite Hanabi, whispered Hinata. Address him appropriately by his name and please keep in mind that he is just trying to be friendly with you. Fine whatever, the young Hyuga then replied. Ah, is Hanabi-chan finally recognizing me, smirked Kanahamaru. He then pinched both her cheeks as he stretched them. Hanabi immediately swatted his hands away as she rubbed her face. That's it monkey boy. I'm going to beat the crap out of you when I get. You. Nah nah, catch me if you can then, as the young Saratobi ran off towards the trees. Get back here you stupid monkey, as Hanabi then gave chase. Hinata smiled as she watched the scene unfold. It wasn't until sometime after Hanabi joined that Naruto invited Kanahamaru in their morning runs. As the Hyuga heiress remembered it, the young Saratobi heard of Naruto's victory over Mizuki and thus wanted to train under him in order to someday gain power and fame which didn't automatically state, because he's the Sandame's grandson. Although Naruto didn't mind, he also had another reason for inviting him. Flashback, and Kono here will be your training partner from now on, smiled Naruto as he introduced the boy to the group. Why, then questioned Hanabi. He looks really weak. Who are you calling weak short stack? Kanahamaru rebuttal as he raised his fist in agitation. Weakling, she plainly stated again not giving much care for consequences. Kanahamaru growled as he then turned back to Naruto. I wanted to train under you. So why do I have to train with her, as he pointed at the said person? It's important that you start off at your own level before going higher. Trust me when I say that Hinata-chan and I learned that the hard way during one of our practice runs. But I don't want to train with her, to which Hanabi also gave a slight nod in agreement. Naruto then looked up in thought before looking back in inspiration to the young Sarutobi. I'll tell you what, if she doesn't catch you during this entire morning practice then I'll start giving you instructions okay? Promise? Yeah yeah, I'll teach you some of the stuff I know. Kono smirked with excitement. Although he already had Jown an appointed instructor, he found Naruto a far better teacher in relation to his current. Peace cake, but he then looked to him curiously as he scratched his cheek. But what happens if she does catch me? Then you're going to have to keep doing it until she doesn't. And why do I have to do this? Then asked Tanabi. I didn't come here to train with a weakling like him. So what exactly do I gain out of this? Why? Naruto then asked. Are you worried that you're actually weaker than my Kohai here that you won't be able to catch him? Of course not. Hanabi exclaimed. Then you won't have any trouble catching him then will you? He then taunted. The young Hyuga gave him a slight glare before turning back to neutral. I'll give him a 10 second head start. In your dream short stack as Kono soon ran off towards the forest. It soon became visibly apparent that Hanabi was growing irritated by the boy's banters. She then turned to face the pair. If he comes back dead it's not my fault, as she soon ran off to chase him. Naruto gaped at the statement. I'm beginning to think this was a bad idea. Agreed, nodded Hinata. End flashback although. Kanahamaru had succeeded recently in not getting caught, 
he kind of actually enjoyed his time in teasing her sister as he baited her into a chase to which the young Hyuga kept getting all caught up in. Now if Hanabi was irritated by this or actually enjoyed this game of tag, she didn't really know but decided to leave it be as she didn't seem to complain much about it. Besides it was good for her that she did kid stuff and not get so caught up in Hyuga customs and traditions and actually behaved like a kid as she was supposed to. Hinata then began her light jog around the forest as her mind began to wander onto her blonde friend. As of recently they both have been incredibly busy with missions. When she was home, Naruto was out and vice versa. But with the time they did have together they would usually spend it talking about their usual stuff like how their missions were, what had been going on with their lives, or if they learned anything new recently. But as of this week, Naruto wouldn't be home for a while and thus would be unable to attend their usual meeting times. Flashback, you're going away, as Hinata held her mouth unable to contain her shock. You don't have to put it that way, said Naruto trying to calm his pale friend down. My team is currently going on a mission to the Land of Waves as a bodyguard escort for some asin against bandits. The blonde then looked very giddy. Oh I'm so excited about this mission. I finally get to see some action against bad guys. Bodyguard work, she questioned. Isn't that a C-ranking mission? Yep, said Naruto excitedly. My first C-ranking mission, I can't wait to get started. Oh. The blonde then noticed his friend's drop in behavior. Is there something wrong Hinata-chan? Hinata shook her head. No. It's just that you'll be gone for a while. And I'll be lonely. Naruto chuckled a bit before giving her one of his reassuring smiles. Don't worry, I'll be back as soon as I can. Plus as a bonus I'll bring back a souvenir from Wave, alright? The Hyuga heiress then smiled to this. Okay naruto Kuen, just please promise me that you'll be safe. He then gave a thumb up, believe it. When I return from a successful mission let's celebrate at Ikaraku's. End flashback it has been some time since he left and truthfully she was a bit sad with how long he was gone. Most deranking missions that Jennings went on were usually local jobs in neighboring places around fire country ranging from farming work to locating lost pets. But as missions get higher in rank, so does their danger and distance from home. Although she worried about Naruto, he made it a habit to constantly remind her to have faith in him as he'll always come back safely. Since finishing her strength training and practicing her taijutsu, she decided to call her morning session to a close as she proceeded on to the next part of her routine day. Hyuga Compound Breakfast is ready, called Hinata as she served the dishes on the table. This was the next part of her morning as she would make something for herself and something for anyone else who was present. Hanabi arrived to the table first followed closely by Kanahamaru. Wow Hinata Nichin, this looks delicious as usual. Hanabi-chan would probably burn water given the chance. You can't burn water, the young Hyuga plainly stated. Knowing you, you'd definitely find a way. Shut up, as they then began their meal. Hinata watched the two bicker as her mind then began to wander again. She didn't know when it started, but recently she took a liking to cooking. To further this pursuit she began learning tips, tricks, and recipes from any source she could find from the main branches cook to books in the Kanoha library. Of course she didn't have to do this as the Hyuga household did employ a full-time cook. But she enjoyed cooking as a kind of hobby. Since Naruto liked it so much, she figured why not. Good morning. Hinata turned around as she gave her father a polite bow. Good morning father. The elder Hyuga took his seat at the table as he quietly ate his meal. Her father was still a strict and somewhat cold man as long as she could remember. But somewhere deep down she knew he cared for both her and Hanabi's well-being. At first Hayashi was none too interested in spending time with her outside of training as he had his own routine to follow as each morning a servant would bring his breakfast to his study so he could remain relatively undisturbed when sorting out the daily state affairs of the Hyuga clan. But then one day after having a conversation with Naruto, her father started being a part of her daily life. She then looked back to see her father quietly eating his meal. 
the effect Naruto Kuen has on people. Kanoha, afternoon, at morning's conclusion she was then given the option of either training with her team or with her father and sister at the household. However it usually was with her teammates. As far as her father was concerned, she was more than capable of keeping up with her studies. After demonstrating her ability to use Kaden, he found her private training with Naruto sufficient enough in keeping her gentle fist style well polished. Although at times he would request a session with her either to teach her something new or a surprise sparring match with her sister to make sure she wasn't messing around. With her sister in those matches, she made sure to go easy on her to make sure neither of them got into trouble with their father. So making her way to the training ground she found her team already there waiting for her. About time you got here Hinata, we've been waiting for you, called Kiba as his dog Akameru barked in agreement. Good afternoon, greeted Shino. Now that Hinata is here, said Kurinai. Let's begin our team building exercise. Okay, nodded Hinata. The team. Soon ventured into the forest to begin their exercise. Okay, called Kurinai. I've hidden something special out here in the woods coated with my chakra. But don't bother trying to sense for it as its presence is well shielded. So you need to combine all your abilities to find it. Kurinai sensei, won't you tell us what the target is? asked Kiba. No, that's a part of the exercise. Are there any other questions? Will there be a time limit? asked Shino. Kurinai nodded, the time limit is until this late afternoon. But don't worry, I won't penalize any of you if you don't find it. However I will be quite impressed if you do, and if you find it I'll buy dinner for everyone. Thank you sensei, they all said unanimously. Good, now go, to which the team dispersed. So what the hell can this thing be, asked Kiba as he jumped along the treetop along with his dog. Do you really think this thing can really be that hard to find? It best not to underestimate Kurinai sensei, answered Shino who was jumping alongside him. Sensei is an expert Jinjutsu user. It would be unwise of us to underestimate her skills. So we better look everywhere carefully or otherwise we might miss it. Hinata nodded as she kept close to them. Although they were trained like any other genins of their kind they were also trained with the special quality of being a tracker unit. Looking to her left was Kiba Inazuka, the nose of her team. He was from the Inazuka clan who were well known for their dog-based justice and their incredible sense of smell. Now Kiba had a very loud personality similar to Naruto. But in contrary to him, he lacked a kind of sensitivity and finesse her blonde friend had. Now looking to her right was Shino Aburaim, the ears of her team. The Aburaim clan was a very mysterious group as they were the definition of secrecy. However it was a well-known fact that their clan specialized in bug jutsus which varied in many types of tasks. Although Shino didn't talk much he appeared to be kind and polite from what she could see. She herself was the eyes of the group. With her Byakugan, she could spot things far away with certain defined detail making her a very valuable asset to the team. With their three special attributes put together, they were easily the best tracker and spy team for their age group in the short time they've worked together. However this particular task was going to be quite the challenge. I don't smell anything that matches Kurinai sensei's scent, said Kiba. So she must have chakra scrubbed it well if there isn't even a trace of it left. My chakra bug sense her presence, added Shino. But it seems to be too faint which is making it difficult for me to locate. He then looked to his third teammate. Hinata. The Hyuga heiress nodded as she activated her Byakugan to look around. She then shook her head. I don't see anything. Whatever it is must be shielded from my sight. Then we'll have to investigate everything as we go, said Shino, but that would take forever, then said Kiba. There has to be a faster way to find whatever it is. He then slammed his fist into his hand. If only Sensei told us what the target was my nose could probably have picked it up by now. Hinata gave it some thought as she looked around. But Kurinai sensei must have left some clue somewhere. There is no way it could be this perfectly concealed. 
I agree, nodded Shino. But we don't have much to go on. The pale girl gave it some thought until something came to mind. Shino Cohen, do you think you can spread a bug network around the forest? Why would he do that? asked Kiba. I see, then said Shino. He then raised his arms as a swarm of bugs began to fly out covering approximately a one mile radius of their position. Wait. What's the point is doing that, to which Akamaru barked in agreement. Quiet, answered the bug ninja. After a moment he looked up as he gave a slight flinch. Did you find something? I'm not sure, said Shino. I felt something for a moment but then it disappeared. Kiba looked at the scene in bewilderment. What could this be about? Slowly he thought about it as he looked around at all the bugs that surrounded them in approximately the one mile he smelled them. There it is again. The dog ninja looked in the said direction, but then it hit him. He's using himself as a sensor tower, looking a second time around him, he could feel all the bugs around them sending some sort of signal back to the source as Shino as this point could sense anything that damn well breathed in the mile around him. Shino Kuen, asked Hinata. I'm not sure, it was there for one moment but then it disappeared again. Shino shook his head a bit. I'm not sure where it is. It keeps disappearing before I can lock onto it. Kiba then looked at a particular direction as he focused his eyes. I think the object is alive, which caused both his teammates to look at him. Well it's just a guess, but it seems to be the most obvious choice. I agree, then said Hinata. Simply if Kurinai really wanted to hide something it couldn't have been something stationary as it would have been easily located by the bug network. If their teacher really wanted them to work for it, it must have had to be something that could continuously elude them. She then looked back. Shino Kuen. I got it, he said. It's over there, as he pointed in the said direction. Kiba Kuen. I'm on it, exclaimed Kiba to which he raced in the said direction. Which way now? Hinata activated her Byakugan, something moved to your right, to which Shino nodded too. All right, as he chased after it. But to no avail, the target was leading them on a very merry chase which seemed to have lasted a good ten minutes until. All right. I've got it sent. I can chase it on my own now. Then after two more minutes, I got. It. Shino nodded in approval as Hinata smiled in a job well done. Soon Kiba walked out of the forest with the special object in hand. How cute. Hinata blushed as she looked at it as she held her hands together. Shino kept silent as he looked at it. This was. Interesting. In Kiba's hand was a squirrel with a collar around its neck brandishing a wooden talisman marked with their teacher's name. I guess that it. Kanoha, sometime later, Hinata began her wandering around Kanoha as she didn't have anything in particular she had to do. Although her teacher offered to take them out she kindly refused. Simply at this time she was free to do anything she liked. On days like this when she completed her usual morning rituals, everything was just free time. Since she had no missions to do or prepare for she just enjoyed the leisure time she had to allow her mind to wander. However, I'm bored. Usually on days like this Naruto would be around her to keep her company. The blonde had this radiant personality which always made her smile every time she was around him. But now that he was gone for so long, she just simply didn't know what to do with the time. I guess I can go to Hanabi and see if she needs to do anything today. Just as she was about to walk back to the Hyuga compound a huge rumble was felt which she could literally swear shook the entire village of Kanoha. What was that? She then ran to look around for the epicenter of where this all occurred. Finally after a little running she arrived to the Kanoha hospital to see a large crater in the ground and a trail leading into the hospital. Not being able to deny her curiosity, she went to the entrance to investigate. Hey doctors. He needs immediate medical help right now. Get some people over here. Hinata instantly recognized who the voice belonged to, Naruto Kuen. From everything she knew, 
Naruto wasn't able to make a jump this far due to massive power requirements it needed. But looking back at the crater it was apparent that he did and it was rather messy one due to the displaced ground he teleported on. Now entering the hospital she saw the blonde with a couple of doctors around a very feminine looking boy, and her friend trying desperately to get some immediate help. He then looked back to her. Hinata-chan. Thank God you're here. I need your help now. Of course, she stuttered. What is it? Haku suffered some serious damage to his shoulder. But I managed to preserve him by placing him in a time loop keeping him from death by preserving him in the last few minutes of his life. But I have to get back to the fight. If I leave now the time loop will end. He then grabbed Hinata's hands. I need you to use your jukin to help slow down the blood flow so he doesn't bleed out. Hinata slowly nodded as she approached the dying boy. Just as Naruto had said, the boy was experiencing one of his time jutsus, time loop or repeat, which kept an isolated pocket within spacetime repeating itself within a window of two minutes. The technique's general purpose was to place allies in stasis in case something happened to them. However the drawback was that the watch needed to be close by to be them to keep it working. Now as she looked to him she was slightly scared at seeing so much blood everywhere. It just happened to be her luck that no other Hyugas were on the medical staff as they were either at the compound or out on a mission making her the only one there able to do something about it. Her hands began to shake at seeing how much pain the boy was in. I don't know if I can do it. Naruto then placed his hands on Hinata's shoulder to calm her down. You can do it, I know you can. But Naruto Kuen. Just breathe, remember how you kept me from bleeding out my leg. Just focus at the correct chakra points to control the blood and you'll be fine. Hinata paused for a second closing her eyes taking in a deep breath before reopening them with renewed determination. I'll do what I can. All right, stated Naruto. I have to go now. I've got an old bastard to beat the crap out of. As he said this, a strange orange glow appeared as he then disappeared to wherever he was going. The pale girl's eyes widened, but then immediately focused back on her task. I'll ask him later about that later. Okay. Get him to the ER. The head medical ninja then looked to Hinata to which she easily saw their face twist into a frown. I really don't want an amateur in the operating room while we're working. But since there are no other Hugas here you're going to have to be the one to help control his blood flow as we stabilize him. Hinata nodded as it was clear to what she had to do. So arriving at the ER she did her best to coordinate with the staff as they got to work setting up sutras to regenerate and close the wound as she made certain that the boy's blood was going exactly where it needed to in his body. Of course she was nervous as hell for being dropped into a situation like this all of a sudden since all of this was new territory to her. At times when she was about to freak out at hearing the sudden spikes in his heart monitor, she would take a deep breath and remember that Naruto and this boy were counting on her to save his life. Then finally after an exhausting one-hour surgery. Operation is done, he is stable now. Hinata breathed out in relief as she was worried the entire time that she would mess up and get the boy killed. Thank goodness that he'll be okay now. The medical ninja from before then approached her removing their mask. Good job kid, for a complete amateur you did one hell of a lifesaver. Thank you, as she blushed at the compliment. If you ever decide to find work here I'll definitely write you up a recommendation, to which Hinata nodded happily too. Ano, so will he really be okay? Yeah, but he'll have to. Rest for a week until he fully recovers. So overall just let him rest peacefully and he'll be fine. Hinata then gave a polite bow as she then left with the knowledge she did good that day. Kanoha, late evening, at this time Hinata returned to the compound to rest for the day. Before returning she was expecting Naruto to reappear with his team back to Kanoha as he did before, but did not. At first she worried that something might have happened to him. But then she knew better than that as she did have faith in Kanoha's number one unpredictable ninja. So she decided not worry as she would wait for him to return. As she walked back to her room, 
her father summoned for her. So crossing by his door as she slid it open, How was your day Hinata? asked Hayashi as he kept his usual stoic tone. Hinata looked up in thought which soon turned to a smile, just another usual day father. The elder Hyuga blinked a few times at this before giving one his rare grins. Of course, as he then turned back to his desk. Good night Hinata. Good night father, to which the pale girl returned to her room finishing yet another day in the village of Kanoha. That's incredible Naruto-kun, complimented Hinata. You actually fought against an enemy ninja? Yeah, said Naruto excitedly. They were really tough and everything. But then he threw his pocket watch into the air as he caught it again. This really got me out of the pinch as it helped. But what then happened? The blonde Jinchuriki looked up in thought as he recalled detail by detail how the mission went. On the way there they were almost immediately ambushed by two water nines but were easily dispatched by himself and Sasuke as Kakashi cleaned up the mess. But then almost immediately afterwards they encountered a powerful Jounin level water ninja named Zabuza. During that encounter their teacher got captured by him to whom both he and Sasuke managed to force him to retreat. Then later after arriving in the village, a few stories were exchanged like what has been going on in the land of waves since Gato took over. It was also during this time that Kakashi taught the group how to stick and repel things using chakra. But then later that week the group patrolled the work site in the afternoon where they were attacked by Zabuza again accompanied by his apprentice Haku, which was a boy Naruto unknowingly met earlier that week. From their craziness ensued as Kakashi faced off against Zabuza again as he and Sasuke fought Haku. Interestingly during Haku's mirror trick Sasuke's bloodline limit activated which gave them the edge to eventually overcome the ice user's mirror trap. After disabling him they then went to assist their teacher as Kakashi and Zabuza were deadlocked in a stalemate. Then after disabling him it was believed they had won the battle. However it appeared that their employer Gato had other plans as he brought his own private army to silence them accompanied with its own artillery group. Another battle then ensued as they were bombarded by cannon shells. In one of the blasts, Haku was injured protecting Zabuza which forced Naruto to jump him back to Kanoha for medical treatment. Then after returning he found that Inari along with Tazuna had convinced their village to fight for their freedom. In one colossal battle, victory was claimed as the mercenary force was easily crushed as Zabuza took Gato's head. Man that story never gets old, said Naruto as he smiled to his pale friend. Literally this must have been the fifth time he told her as it's been three months since the Land of Waves mission. Hinata smiled at this. Although most people would have been sick already at hearing this story. The Hyuga heiress just enjoyed the energy Naruto exerted as he talked about his achievements. However it still bothered her at how Naruto refused to or rather avoid telling her how he managed to teleport all the way back to Kanoha then back again to Waves. But seeing that he was rather adamant about it, it was something she chose not to pry at until he was ready to share. That was the least she could do for him as she was his friend. Hey! Let's go to Ichiraku. I hear that Tuchi is serving a new kind of ramen this week. Naruto Kuen, eating so much ramen isn't good for you. You should be eating more vegetables in your diet. But they do have vegetables in there, as he attempted to draw it out with his hands. Naruto Kuen, as Hinata gave him a calm look. The blonde Jinchuriki looked back as he scratched the back of his head. Ah, don't give me that look, Hinata chan. The pale girl continued to remain silent as she looked at him. All right, already, I get it. I'll start getting more vegetables into my diet. Thank you Naruto Kuen, smiled Hinata. But on the condition that you have a ramen bowl with me right now, then said Naruto as he took her hand dragging her off to the stand without even waiting for her answer. Although Hinata was slightly bashful at his actions she soon gave a soft blush as a warm smile appeared. Before long she started walking side by side with him. They soon arrived to Ichiraku as they both took a seat. Welcome, greeted Tuchi. The usual for you and your friend? Of course, eagerly nodded Naruto. The same please Tuchi-san, said Hinata. 
The old chef nodded as he then looked to his daughter. I am, the usual for our usual customers. Yes father, chimed the brunette. After a few minutes their meal was served as their bowls were placed in front of them. Just before they were about to dig in, may I join you for a while Naruto-san? The blonde turned to see a feminine-looking boy as he waved to him. Hey Haku, so want to join us for a bite? Haku nodded giving a soft smile as he took his seat while ordering a bowl of miso. As the pair looked to the ice user they reflected on how things came to be. Since his recovery all he wanted to do was return back to Zabuza. The fact of the matter was the water jonin was a rogue who had a few brushes with the ninjas of Kanoha thus was imprisoned there for obvious reasons. For the most part his freedom was based on their scrutiny because of the fact he was a rogue and didn't belong to a village at the moment. Interestingly enough he didn't seem to disagree with his treatment as he practically took the imprisonment without a single word of argument. But why exactly he chose this was obvious to those who knew his reason. Simply he just wanted to give Haku a place to call home. Concerning the boy in question, he would visit his master at least once a day to talk to him about anything he could think of. But now concerning his ability to walk so freely around Kanoha was based on two things. First was a sworn statement by Zabuza claiming Haku was just following his orders and would be no threat to them. Of course the other reason was that he was a rare bloodline limit user of the Yuki clan to which the Hokage personally asked him himself if he wished to become a ninja of Kanoha. Although it touched Haku deeply to actually be wanted as such, he calmly chose to postpone it as he wanted to wait for Zabuza to be his teacher again if he were to be part of a genin team. In yet another surprising decision, the water jounin agreed yet hesitant at first to serve Kanoha in such a capacity. But before that he would still need to serve out some of his prison sentence as well as pass probation by other jonins before they even consider letting him near any children. But then at the thought of Zabuza teaching kids like Kanahamaru put a sour face on Naruto. That would simply be too scary. Although he had faith after cracking his hard exterior that there was a good man in there, I would seriously suggest psychological help before letting him near kids. Is there something wrong Naruto-san? asked Haku at seeing the strange look the blonde was giving. No, nothing, said Naruto immediately as he waved his hands innocently. So how is civilian life treating you, asked Hinata. It's okay, replied the ice user. My current setup is fine. The apartment is well furnished, and I do work at a local grocery to help pay for my expenses. My boss is rather kind as she helps me understand a lot of things. Haku then looked up with a solemn expression. A place to call home. What a wonderful feeling it is. Naruto and Hinata couldn't help but feel happy for him. They were aware of the kind of lifestyle he had prior to meeting Zabuza which was truly awful. At being alone for so long left him with some serious self-esteem issues. But now getting used to a life under the sun around people who wanted him, you can say in a way that this was what Haku was waiting all his life for. Good for him. By the way, then asked Hinata. Have you made any new friends recently? The ice user almost choked on his ramen at the question. Well about that. There he is. The three occupants looked back to see a small crowd of girls giving off a kind of scary fan girl aura as they slowly began to approach them like predators stalking prey. Can I get this to go please? asked Haku hurriedly. Yeah sure, replied Tuchi. But I'll need a minute. I'll come back to pick it up later, as the feminine looking boy quickly made a run for it as his mob began chasing after him. Wait Haku Kuen. We love you. Please wait. Haku chan. As they ran away, by Haku, shouted Naruto. See you another time. He then looked back to Hinata as they shared a laugh with each other. At looking at the crowd, they could almost swear it rivaled the group that always followed Sasuke around. I guess he must be really happy now, smiled Hinata. I suppose so, but I think the fan group is a bit too much. He then leaned over to whisper to her. And I think it's kind of scary. What do you mean, she then questioned. 
It's because of his new friends that the grocery business he works at is really popular, well I'm aware of that, Naruto frowned. But I mean the kind of attention he gets. What do you mean by that naruto Kuen? I mean. What is it naruto Kuen? I wonder if some of the guys that go to him know, stressing the last word. That he is actually a guy. Naruto then looked up in thought. I mean if Haku just chose not to dress so androgynously and just picked a gender to dress as then I'm pretty sure he would cut his fan group at least in half. Although he mistakenly thought he was a girl as well, but strategically kept that fact to himself. Hinata thought process paused for a moment. Then second by second her face began to turn red as she soon cupped her cheeks as her mind began to run wild at what she was thinking. Oh my! Hinata-chan, asked Naruto now concerned for his pale friend as he waved his hand in front of her. Are you feeling all right? Kanoha, afternoon, although neither of them had anything to do that day, their respective teams were calling a group meeting which was somewhat unusual. For the most part, the only reason they gathered was either for mission briefings or training together. But seeing that neither of them could be the case, Naruto couldn't help but wonder, what would be so urgent to call us on our day off? Now at the bridge where they always met Kakashi, Team 7 waited patiently for their teacher to arrive as they were quite aware of his tendency to be late. So as they waited the three genins did their own individual thing as Naruto stared off into oblivion daydreaming about being the greatest Okage, Sakura chatted with Sasuke trying to get his undivided attention, and Sasuke. He was looking at Naruto as his mind was immersed in thoughts concerning the blonde. Just what in the hell is he, he continuously thought. He was nothing special during the academy days but now he's. Doing things I have never even seen before. Although he was never openly admitting it, he was becoming jealous of the progress the young blonde was making. For all these years, people would tell him how great he was or how much of a prodigy he was at being a ninja. To say the least his ego fed off this attention although he would never quite admit it. But now in the open ninja world, a kid he considered average at best was outshining him in so many ways. In the mission at Waves, for the people who saw would say that he did great for a genin. But for Naruto, he was spectacular. The blonde did a bulk of the work as he was primarily his support when they defeated Haku and Zabuza. Sasuke was irked at this. What is his secret? There is no way that Dobe could be that fast or strong. Then recalling Naruto disappearing from the battlefield along with Haku, could his secret be time-space jutsu? He then mentally shook his head at this. There's no way a dobe like that can know something that advanced. However he still left that thought open as there was too strong of facts to disregard it. But then narrowing his eyes at Naruto, but still I should keep my eyes on him. He might prove useful later in helping me get what I want. After a few more minutes Kakashi arrived to give his usual excuse of being late with his students calling him out on it. But then after taking a moment to settle down, I guess you all are curious to why I called you here today. Yeah sensei, what did you want to tell us, asked Sakura. The silver-haired jonin soon pulled out three papers as he displayed it before them. I know it's kind of sudden but I decided to nominate the three of you for the chunin exams. What, the three genins then exclaimed as they couldn't believe what they just heard. Sasuke instantly corrected himself back to his stoic self. Sakura could only gape at the opportunity that was just dropped into their lap. Naruto couldn't help but feel ecstatic as his eyes twinkled in complete utter happiness. Are you serious Kakashi-sensei? We can all take the Chunin exams. Are you sure about this sensei? then asked Sakura. Are we really ready for this? Kakashi once again recalled the conversation he had in the meeting just earlier that day about this same subject. He then closed his eyes before reopening them. That is up to all of you to decide on your own. Although I gave you a nomination you must decide if you wish to take the test. If you do, please submit your application in room 301 by 4 p.m. next week this day. He then looked to Naruto before looking to his other students. I would also like to talk to Naruto alone for a moment, to which Sasuke and Sakura nodded giving them their privacy. 
Kakashi then turned back to Naruto. Naruto, I want you to not use your watch during the course of this test. Huh? Why not, as he gave his teacher a confused look. I thought this test allowed the use of any ninja tool. True, but think of this as my test to you. Another test, sighed Naruto. Why do I have to do that? Why not, then smirked Kakashi. Don't you have enough faith in your own skills? The blonde fell silent to his question as he thought about it. So giving his request its final push, don't worry Naruto, I know you can pass this test using your own skills and abilities. Naruto brightened at the compliment as he smiled. Okay Kakashi Sensei, to which he then clicked a few of the keys which inactivated the watch before pocketing it. I'll store it away in my room when I get back. Kakashi gave a nod of approval towards this. Truthfully he wanted Naruto to develop more of his skills without the watch. Like his former master Minato, he took the time to develop his mind and body before going on to develop Hiration. In observing thus far, he feared that Naruto was becoming too dependent on the watch. There will be a day that Naruto won't have it, and if that day ever came he didn't want to think about it. So for his benefit, he wanted the young blonde to make something of himself now. When he was truly ready, he would be something spectacular. Kakashi gave a soft grin, he'll definitely surpass his father someday, and with that he disappeared. Then taking their cue the team left as Sasuke and Naruto were giddy for the chance at advancement for their own reasons. However their pink compatriot was another case as she looked down depressed. I can't do this, thought Sakura. I can't do anything. During her time at Waves, all she did was stay behind as she watched her team do the fighting. Even the only task of protecting civilians she could not do as her teammates were forced to go back for her. This is hopeless, as she then sighed while sulking away. Naruto looked to Sakura, in worry. In piling in all the information he was able to gather, he had an idea what could have been bothering the pink kunoichi. She must be really worried about the Chunin exams. Of course he could have said something to cheer her up, but it would have been more effective if she heard it from someone else. He then turned to Sasuke. Hey I think you should have a talk with Sakura. She seems really down. The young Uchiha grunted at this. Why should I? She's free to do whatever she wants. Hey! Don't be a jerk about this Sasuke. She really needs someone to talk to her and it would really mean something if it came from you. Sasuke glared at him as he didn't want to go through such a hassle. However he did have a point. Although he wasn't interested in getting any closer to his teammates, Sakura was still part of the team. If one part failed then they would all fail together. He then rolled his eyes as he conceded. Fine, I'll talk to her. Much obliged, smirked Naruto. He then quickly caught up with her as he was now walking by her side. She must really be down. Usually by now Sakura would have been talking away trying to get his attention. He rolled his eyes again at the awkwardness he was forced into. Simply he's never been the type to talk nor sympathize with others. But looks like now he was going to have to improvise it. Do you want to talk, as he averted his eyes while rubbing the back of his head. Sakura looked up as a small smile formed, sure. They soon found themselves at a dango shop as they took a seat on the bench. Sasuke hunched over as he stared straight while supporting himself on his arms. He didn't dare look at her as he didn't really know how to connect with people. At best his only connection with people was Naruto who was sadly the closest thing he had to a friend in terms of a talking relationship. But thinking carefully now, he chose the words he wanted to use. So what has been bothering you? The pink kunoichi almost jumped a bit. She then looked to the boy as she waved her hands trying to look as reassuring as possible. Nothing is bothering me. I'm just been a little tired lately. Sasuke would have gladly have taken that as an answer and left, but he knew Naruto would bother him later about this. So with another sigh, you're worried aren't you? About the upcoming test right? 
Sakura opened her mouth but then fell silent as she looked down slightly depressed as she gave nod. The boy had a pretty good idea that she was now becoming self-aware of her weakness and he had to agree at how pathetic she was as a ninja. However he was at least respectful enough not to say it. He then closed his eyes in thought before reopening them. We have week before the test. Do you want me to help you train a bit? Eh, as she looked wide-eyed to him. You want me to train with you? Sasuke gave another sigh at how troubling things has just become. I should have just kept my mouth shut. Although he said it on impulse, he couldn't back out now. As he looked to the shining eyes of his teammate, I'm going to kick that dope's ass when I see him. Hyuga compunned, cool, shouted Naruto. So your team will also be participating in the Chunin exams. Hinata nodded as she gave a soft smile. We're going to have to train extra hard this week. Yeah I can't wait, the blonde smiled. So I don't have to come right, asked Hanabi who was just passing by. But won't you miss Konokuin? Who would miss that stupid monkey boy, as the young Hyuga soon stomped away. They chuckled at this before resuming their conversation. Since the exams are coming we won't be having any missions this week. So do you want to train at our usual place and time? Hinata nodded happily to this. But then she looked up in thought as she just remembered something. I'm sorry Naruto Kuen, but I also told Kiba Kuen and Shino Kuen that I would train with them as well. That's all right, said Naruto. You can invite them to our training session. The more the merrier, right? The Hyuga heiress gave. A soft sigh at this. Although she liked the suggestion she also had a somewhat equal dislike of it. During these mornings she liked the time she spent alone with Naruto as they were able to talk about anything they wished. Even with Kanahamaru and her sister around she always managed to find ways to sneak herself and Naruto away into the forest to have their alone time. However knowing Naruto as well as she did, if he acted any other way he just wouldn't be him. Okay Naruto Koen, I'll tell my team where to meet. Awesome. But what about your team? Wouldn't it be good to practice with them as well? Nah, those two are most likely doing their own thing. So I wouldn't want to bother them. Kanoha, training grounds, morning, Naruto scratched his head trying to comprehend how things ended up the way they did. Is there something wrong Naruto Kuen? asked Hinata. The young blonde looked to his right. Well I know why your team is here because you invited them. But why are they here, pointing to Sasuke and Sakura who were present? Why? Is there a problem with us training here, stoically asked the emo. Not exactly, flatly stated Naruto. But why did you have to kick me in the butt, as he rubbed his rear trying not to fell offended? Just felt like it. Okay. So then why are they here, as he then pointed to the now present Ino, Shikamaru, and Chuji to his right. Well I just thought it would be nice to get some training in before the big test, smiled Ino. Shikamaru yawned as he stepped forward. Actually Sakura told Ino about the private lessons she was getting from Sasuke emphasizing with his fingers. So she didn't want to be left out as we ended up getting dragged along to authenticate her current story. Shikamaru. What a troublesome women, as he then plugged his ears at the ranting he was getting. Well, as he scratched his cheek. I wasn't expecting this many people. But who cares right? Let's all have a good morning okay? What's the point? Everyone then looked to Shikamaru. What are you talking about? asked Chuji as he was now looking up from his breakfast. The shadow Nin rolled his eyes at this. If anyone actually bothered to look there have been no rookies like us who's participated in the Chunin exams for the last five years. Why not? Shikamaru sighed, who knows? There could be a ton of reasons why, but more importantly it's bad news for us. What's that supposed to mean? It means, then started Sakura as she looked down now slightly worried. All the participants this year are all seasoned ninjas who have a lot more experience with the missions they've been on. So that means. Yeah, we're up against genins who are probably out of our league. 
At this information the atmosphere felt as it had gotten colder around them. So what, which caught everyone's attention as they looked to Naruto. It just means we have to work twice as hard so that they don't look down on us. Big words for a dobe smirked Sasuke as he crossed his arms. What's wrong jerk? Afraid of a little hard work? The young Uchiha glared at him before averting his eyes trying to maintain his coolness. But Naruto Kuen weakly said Hinata. We only have a week to prepare. Do you really think that's enough time? Of course, exclaimed Naruto. So let's get started. How about this Naruto Kuen? asked Hinata. That's great, smiled Naruto. It's looking better and better each day. A week had easily flown by as the rookie nine was working diligently, more or less, rising to the challenge of the Chunin exams. At this time Hinata was working on something new she was developing as she practiced on the river near a waterfall while Naruto watched her perform her new jutsu. Incredible Hinata-chan, clapped Naruto. This new jutsu style is going to be great. Thank you naruto Kuen. Hinata blushed. But are you going to be okay? I haven't seen you practice at all. What are you talking about, he then asked. I am right over there, as he pointed to his original self who seemed to have been working hard at some strange jutsu in his hands along with a few other bunshins. The pale girl smiled as she admired how hard her friend was working. She soon exited the river as she made her way to the original as she crouched next to him curious as to what he was doing. Naruto Kuen. The blonde was sweating intensely as he concentrated to stabilize his technique. But at feeling the overwhelming effects he dispelled the jutsu along with his bun shins as he flopped back to rest. Man, this technique is hard to use, he breathed out. I still need both my hands to do it. You're trying, calmly stated Hinata. You'll get it eventually. But at least you're not using the time echo to do it. Well Kakashi-sensei told me to try passing this test without the use of the watch and I'm not one to back down from a challenge. Besides, as Naruto gave a thoughtful look. The time echo is far too dangerous for anyone to use in any case whatsoever. Hinata nodded as she understood his reasoning. This learning technique did allow its user almost instantaneous access of whatever they wanted to learn. However it wasn't as simple as that. Aside from fully learning the target jutsu, the user would also learn every path they would take it in due time. In Naruto's example, he learned every little detail of what Kage Bunshin could do and in time any pathway he could imagine of taking Kage Bushin which resulted into Bakuretsu Bunshin no Jutsu. But as great as it all sounded, he was taking years to decades of learning and squeezing it down to seconds. The strain it had on its user was severe. In one bad effect, the user could end up in a coma or worse dead from overwhelming the mind. So to say Naruto was playing it safe in learning his new jutsu brought relief to her as he didn't want her to worry. By the way Naruto Kuen, I've never seen a jutsu like this before. It uses no hand seals at all. Naruto tilted his head to look to her before looking back to the treetops. Well it was just something written in my dad's notes of combining this technique with the raw power of time. He theorized something amazing might be born from it, but it ended up being one of the few things he didn't finish in the end. But you should be at least happy of being able to use the technique freely now. I suppose, but the note said it was done with one hand. Naruto gave a sigh at this. But the exams are tomorrow. So I guess it'll have to do for now. But do you think it'll be enough? Well I know Kakashi-sensei told me not to use my watch, as he gave a slight grin. But it didn't stop me from writing up a few seal formulas in the event of an emergency. Naruto gave a soft chuckle. Well you never know what can happen right? Hinata smiled softly as she nodded to this. But then she looked aside in uncertainty. Naruto Kuen. Do you really think we're ready for this test? There's going to be a lot of experienced genins there and I, but was stopped at feeling her friend's warm hand over hers which caused her to blush slightly. We'll be fine Hinata-chan. We've worked really hard this week. 
The reason will pass is because we want it the most, as Naruto gave his usual confident smile. He then gave Hinata's hand a slight squeeze. Just make sure you'll be there with me when we get to the finish line. The pale girl blinked at this before giving a soft smile. Of course Naruto Kuen. I'll see you at the finish line. But before anything else could happen, a giant explosion was felt as the pair looked out to see a mushroom-like cloud appear from nearby. Do you think? Yeah, as Naruto gave an uneasy laugh. Probably a bad idea to leave them all alone with each other. Kanoha, training grounds, early afternoon, Sasuke and Shino were going at it like there was no tomorrow. From an outside point of view it almost looked like they were trying to kill each other based on how hard they were fighting. But on the contrary they were having the time of their lives at how much they were exerting themselves to beat the other one down. Meanwhile the other part of the rookie nine were watching the epic battle that was going on. Can't believe they're going through this much trouble over a simple sparring match, yawned Shikamu. And I can't believe I got dragged out here for a straight week when I could have spent this time sleeping in. I didn't mind, then added Chuji. Hinata's cooking was great. I can't believe Naruto eats stuff like this every morning. Lucky guy, said Kiba slightly tired after their morning run. But I guess it was a good bonding experience with everyone. Although it was kind of funny to see Hinata's dad surprised when he saw us all at his table on day one inch. Chuji. Gave a light laugh. I'm surprised he didn't tell us all to get out. Hyuga compound Hayashi was calmly reading his paper until he let out a sneeze. Then rubbing his nose he continued to turn the page of his paper. Damn kids. Kanoha, training grounds, early afternoon, I can't believe Naruto and Hinata did this kind of training for almost half a decade, said Sakura as she was breathing heavily. This regime is insane. What? Too hard for you, breathed out Eno trying to act superior. That's what you get forehead girl for trying to compete with the best. Oh yeah Eno pig. I challenge you to a fight right now. Will you girls keep it down, sighed Shikamu. I'm trying to get some rest here. As some more bickering occurred, Sasuke and Shino were done with their match. We'll settle this eventually, said the young Uchiha as Shino gave a simple nod. What happened here? Everyone looked to see Naruto and Hinata arrive curious to what the big explosion was. Unable to resist, the girls just had to let them have it. If anything this was one of the few things Sakura and Ino agreed on which was teasing the pair whenever they were gone for so long. So what were you two up to? asked Ino. Naruto grew slightly uncomfortable at how the Yamanaka girl was saying it. What do you mean? We were just training, added in Hinata. Sure, then said Sakura. You were practicing all right, as she looked to Ino who understood the cue as they looked at each other giving off kissy faces. Stop that, then said Naruto slightly flushed. Hinata-chan and I are just friends. Oh kiss me more Hinata-chan, teased Ino as she started to make more kissy sounds with Sakura. Hinata began to turn redder at the implication as she started to poke her fingers in nervous habit again. Ino-san. Sakura-san. Please stop. Kanoha, the next day, it was now the day of the exams as the rookie nine departed with their own teams towards the testing site. At this time in the afternoon Naruto was walking with his team towards the designated area. It was a nice week, the blonde widely smiled. Sakura gave a nod. It was good to spend time with everyone like that outside the ninja academy. Sasuke remained silent, but gave a slight nod. Although he didn't want to admit it, he kind of liked being a part of something again like he used to be when he was young. Whatever. Oh come on Sasuke I know you liked it, as the blonde began nudging his arm with his elbow. Shut it. Come on, smirked Naruto. I noticed the extra time you were spending with Sakura, which caused the pink kunoichi to flush a bit as her ears perked as she listened in. I know you liked it. At noticing how Sakura was listening in Sasuke was beginning to feel embarrassed at being put on the spot as he then swung his fist at Naruto to which he dodged as he began to run off. 
got to be faster than that if you want. To beat me in the Chunin exams. You dope, as Sasuke grew agitated as he began chasing him. Hey wait up guys, as Sakura ran after them. The trio soon arrived to the admission site as they began climbing the stairs. But as they got further up they saw a huge group of people standing in front of a doorway which caused them to look at them questionably before looking up at the floor designation. They then looked at each other curiously before looking back at the group as they decided to approach them. Why are they standing there like that? asked Naruto. How would I know? then said Sasuke. And why do we even have to bother with them? Well I would also like to know why they are all standing there, said Sakura. As they looked over the group they saw many genin ninjas several years older than them standing in front of a door seemingly guarded by two other ninjas. In front of them were three familiar faces. Tenten-san, said Sakura. Why is your team standing in front of this door? That's because these guys are blocking our way from entering the exam area, replied the weapon mistress. And we're going to be late at this rate. Then why are you guys waiting around here for, then asked Naruto. Well we could force our way through, said Lee. But that would be very impolite of us to do. The blonde then looked to see Niji giving him an indifferent look as he soon turned away to look at the door. Now he knew Niji didn't have any beef with him. However there was slight resentment seeing as he associated with the main branch which caused slight tension to build between the two. Although he wasn't being outwardly hostile he was still being indirectly hurtful towards Hinata, and that was something he needed to fix. But it was put on hold indefinitely as Hinata did not want him to intervene. He then looked back to Lee. Why are you waiting here? What do you mean? he then asked. The testing site is here at room 301. Sasuke now growing irritated refused to tolerate this farce for another moment longer. Seeing as they two were going to be late, he decided to let the cat out of the bag. If any of you dimwits haven't been paying attention, this is the second floor. So how can room 301 be here? At noting this everyone looked up to see as the genjutsu wore off as the sign once saying 301 had now changed to 201. Ten Ten scratched her cheek at the realization. Ah, how did I end up getting tricked by genjutsu like that? Niji gave a slight grunt as he turned away. Let's go, to which his team soon left followed by everyone else, but not before Lee decided to flirt with Sakura only to be flatly shot down. As everyone climbed up to the next floor to the correct room they were once again stalled by another event. Please let me fight you. The trio looked to Lee with a dumbfounded expression. Me, both echoed Sasuke and Naruto. The green beast then got into fighting stance. I wish to. Challenge this year's number one rookie. But more so, I want to challenge the great Uchiha name. Lee wanted to prove that hard work could defeat genius. In beating people like Sasuke and his teammate Niji, it would prove just that. This guy can't be serious, thought Sakura. We really don't have time for this. There's only a few minutes left before the test begins. Sasuke then stepped forward. If he wants a fight then I'll give him one. But before he could proceed further a hand was placed on his shoulder. We can deal with this another time, said Naruto. I'd hate to miss the test because of something like this, and I know you wouldn't want that either. Sasuke grunted at this. I can deal with him just fine. I only need five minutes. Naruto then grabbed his collar. If you want to be a jerk then be a jerk on your own time. But we are not going to be late for this test. And besides why should we waste time fighting Fuzzy Brow anyways, it wouldn't be fair using ninjutsu against him. Then pardon my rudeness, then interjected Lee. But ninjutsu or not, I'm confident I can beat you both at the same time with just my taijutsu. At statement silence permeated for a moment. Sakura, what? Five minutes, as Naruto stepped forward cracking his knuckles. If anything he didn't like anyone calling him weak in any form or way. He was certainly not going to start now. I can deal with this on my own, bluntly said Sasuke. No, 
Fuzzy Brows is mine. The young Uchiha then looked at their opponent as he gave a slight smirk. Fine, whoever takes him down first can have the bragging rights. Suits me, as Naruto charged and first followed closely by Sasuke. Lee was not the least bit impressed. As his kohais charged him, by his eyes they might as well have been walking. As Naruto came in first, he flicked his wrist parrying him away as Sasuke then came in with a swift kick but was promptly blocked. Then from behind, Naruto went for a leg sweep only for him to jump into the air as he grabbed Sasuke's shoulders. Using his body's momentum flung the young Uchiha away only for him to rebalance as he kicked off the floor back at him. He wasn't kidding as Sakura watched the match. Lee easily had both her teammates on the edge of their toes as they were barely keeping up with him. Furthermore, it appeared the green beast wasn't even trying as he dodged and parried them. If this is the level of Genin's this year then this test is going to be hard. However, but we're not being serious yet either. Wow he's tough as Naruto wiped his forehead. No, you're just too slow, mocked Sasuke even though he was breathing heavily as well. Shut up. If this is all you got then you are definitely not worthy of your title, said Lee. The young Uchiha grew irritated at his mockery but kept his cool as he straightened himself up. He then closed his eyes in thought before reopening them. Hey dope. You know that teamwork crap we worked on during the week? The one Kakashi sensei keeps telling us to do. Yeah. What of it? Let's see how it works now. Naruto blinked at this before letting out a smirk. All right, you're on. At this they both got into their stance readying themselves to attack. Lee focused as he then steadied himself. Here they come. I might have to use that technique as the wraps on his arm began to become undone. Just when they were about to go, hold it. Everyone then stopped what they were doing to see a giant talking. Tortoise. Okay, said Naruto looking to the said reptile. Right. Lee looked slightly scared as he quickly kneeled before the tortoise. Please forgive me. But I thought this technique was. Enough, stated the tortoise adamantly. You should have known better not to use your special technique is such trivial matters like this. Yes, as Lee quivered at the tongue lashing. Are you prepared to pay? Yes. Then here is Gai Sensei. In that moment the trio could only gape as their eyes popped open in shock as a now extremely flamboyant looking ninja appeared on the turtle's back. Naruto could only stare at this new turn of events. Maybe this might be why Niji has been cranky lately. In one unanimous thought between the three, those are some thick eyebrows. You fool, as Guy then punched Lee out of the blue. Sensei, as Lee held his cheek. There is no need to say it, as tears began to pour out to which the younger green beast followed too. Then a moment later the two embraced in a rather passionate way. Lee. Guy Sensei. As this was going on. That is totally freaky, they all thought unanimously again. I'm going now, said Sasuke plainly as his two teammates had to agree. As they tried to make a swift exist. Hold it, as the elder green beast appeared right behind them. The trio could only look in shock to how freakishly fast the weirdo was. So you're Kakashi's kids huh, well I promise you to this smile, as it gave an unusual twinkle that there will be no more further problems. He then gave a thumb up. So get going to class now. Just before flickering away. Good luck Lee. Yes Guy sensei as he immediately retied his wraps and started to depart. I came here to test myself to prove that hard work can overcome genius. Lee then looked at them. We'll settle this in due time. So be prepared during the exams, as he soon disappeared at blinding speed. Sakura looked to her teammates only to be met with dead silence. Are you guys okay? Just fine, as Naruto looked up with a smirk. This is going to be fun, said Sasuke equally as excited. The pink Kunoichi nodded as she too was getting the chills of wanting to give her all for this test. As they proceeded up they were met by their 
teacher wishing them a last-minute good luck as they then proceeded inside. Upon entering they were met with the rest of the rookie nine as they gave their pleasantries. Then a fellow leaf ninja by the name of Kabuto approached them giving some senpai advice of how tough this year's exams were going to be. For the next few minutes they were met with uneasiness at seeing the competition they were facing as some of them attempted to start trouble with the rookie nine. But then everything came to a standstill as a huge explosion of smoke occurred at the front of the room as then the Chunin exam instructors appeared. The head proctor going by Ibuki Marino then sat everyone down to their assigned seats as he went on to explain the rules of this test as it would be one of three. First would be they started with ten points, second, would be for every incorrect answer they lose points, and third every time they're caught cheating they'd lose two points. In the event of having a zero, your entire team in disqualified. But it quickly became apparent that no one could answer any of these questions as it was literally impossible to do with what little information they had concerning what was asked. But to those who were wise enough understood that there was another test to this test which was for them to show their abilities to gather information. But in lamest terms, it simply meant who could cheat without getting caught. As people started getting picked off one by one, more of the skilled ninjas had already found a way a way to cheat without too much trouble. But in one particular blonde's case, he simply sat calmly at his desk as if refusing to do anything. I have to wait, I just have to, thought Naruto. Looking at his current circumstance, he didn't have the Byakugan like Hinata, the Sharingan like Sasuke, Watcher tools like Kiba or Shino, or special jutsus like Ino. Going over his assets his best bet then was using Kage Bushin in conjunction with Hake no Jutsu to either impersonate an instructor or one of the testers to learn what the answer was. However he couldn't risk it as he didn't know how the penalty system worked. So looking back at his ninja pouch, there were four rolled up scrolls. Then being careful he removed one of them unrolling it revealing an intricate seal formula. I have to wait till the last moment. According to the test, the tenth question would be revealed after the 45-minute mark. So looking around carefully he spotted a few people who were done, and not able to wait any longer, it's now or never, as he applied his chakra to the seal. Hinata peeked over to see that Naruto's answer sheet was half-filled as he began quickly scribbling down his answer. Some of the proctors who were watching weren't even sure what happened. They knew something was off as half the sheet was instantly filled. However they couldn't mark him on it as really they didn't see anything to prove cheating. Naruto slightly frowned. I can't believe I had to use one. What he used was a time seal which were designed to be multifunctional with the ability to replace some of the effects his watch. However the problem was they were designed only to be temporary as they only had an eighth of the power his watch had and would burn out almost immediately after use. Not to mention it took him hours just to write one of them which was a headache in and of itself. But seeing as this was just the beginning of the Chunin exams and he was forced to use one of his time seals, I have to be more conservative with them. Although he had other tricks he needed to conserve his ace if something worse were to happen down the road. Okay. We will now begin the tenth question, stated a bookie which got everyone's attention. But for this question there are some special rules. As he went on everyone began to feel the atmosphere dense around them at how bad things were looking. On one hand if they refuse they fail. If they get the question wrong then they would be stuck as Jenin forever. Weighing out their choices, many made the safer bet on quitting now to be able to take the test in the next two years. Although everyone was scared, it did not deter Naruto the least bit. In one courageous statement all doubts were swept aside. Upon no more flunkies, they all passed the test which caused uproar amongst many of them. In response Ibuki began to explain the qualities of what it meant to be a chunin as those who didn't have the guts to put their destinies on the line were not worthy of the title. As Naruto heard all this. I can't believe I wasted a time seal for nothing. But before anyone realized it, something came crashing through the window as a giant black banner was flung up revealing yet another interesting character. There's no time to celebrate yet. I am the examiner of the second exam Enko Mitarashi. So follow me and let's get this thing started. 
Bad timing, said Ibuki bluntly. And that window is coming out of your next paycheck, which caused Enko to flinch a bit. So after some awkwardness, the strange lady explained the next part of their test which was basically kill or be killed as this was a no-hold-bars contest to make it to the end alive with what you needed as each team needed two scrolls to pass this test. But firstly they would need to sign a waiver confirming their acknowledgement of the kind of crap they would jumping into so as to avoid any blame further on. So after turning in their submissions Naruto received their earth scroll as they were then instructed to pick a gate to enter from. Forest of death huh, said the blonde as he looked out to the massive woods. The appearance was one thing, but the aura of the forest was quite unique. The place felt old, really old. Anyone with good senses could tell many dark and dangerous creatures lurked within them. Is everything alright Naruto-kun? Naruto looked to Hinata as he gave her a reassuring smile. Yeah, but then scratched his cheek, well sort of. Is there something wrong? The blonde could only give a slight nod at this. As dangerous as the forest was, the people they were up against were no joke either. Looking around, the caliber of the ninjas they were going to face was definitely no pushovers. Aside from having a vague idea at how tough Niji's team was another team concerned him as well. Looking over he saw the hidden sand ninjas getting ready to leave through their gate. As tough as he knew the guy with the makeup was as well as the girl with the giant fan, their red-headed companion felt much different. Just looking at him he seemed really dangerous. Somewhere deep down he knew this to be true as something about him just reeked of horrors he couldn't even imagine. He then looked to Hinata as he reached back into his ninja pouch. Hinata-chan, I want you to take one of my time seals. Eh. Why? I just have a bad feeling this test is going to get really messy and I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Hinata gave a slight as nod as she gave a soft smile. Thank you Naruto Kuen, but you don't have to worry. Shino Kuen and Kiba Kuen will be with me. Well just take it just in case alright. The pale girl looked to him for a moment before nodding. Alright. Naruto smiled, we better be get going then and remember what you promised me Hinata-chan. To meet you at the finish line. All right. Good luck and I'll see you there. As each team prepped themselves ready to go, the rookie nine each departed into their own separate gates. But unknown to Team 7, a very ominous figure was watching them. Soon, very soon Sasuke. I will have you. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.